and welcome to Hacks, where today we're doing something a bit different. We're doing a book review of the book Cyber Jutsu, uh, published by No Starch Press by Ben McCarty. I hope I said that right. Um, this book is fairly new, but when I first ordered it off Amazon, I had trouble getting hold of it. Um, so I pre-ordered it for around twenty pound, twenty British pounds. Um, and it was on back order. And then the day that it was supposed to be delivered, the day it was released, it never arrived. And then seven days later, the order was still outstanding. So sort of cancelled the order. And uh, a few weeks later, you know, I was looking on eBay and I found it on there for £10. And, you know, I thought, why not pick it up and give it a read? Now, I know everything that you can learn about hacking and stuff like that, you can learn online. But I like to read for the sake of reading. I like to get a book in the evenings, read a few chapters before bed. It helps me unwind, it helps me relax, and it just helps me nod off to sleep. You know, sometimes I can't even get a chapter in before I fall asleep. So, I bought this one. Now, I do... They say never judge a book by its cover, right? But I love the artwork on these no-starch press books. It's hard to say that. Um... And the reason why I specifically wanted this one was because it's Cyber Jutsu. It's, um, it's like the art of the samurai and the shinobi of ancient Japan compared, compared with modern cybersecurity. And how the sort of philosophies and lessons of the ancient shinobi can be applied to modern cybersecurity. Now, I must admit, I thought it was going to be a fad. Um... I didn't buy it expecting it to be a serious book with a lot of serious content in it. I bought it because I thought it would be a fun book. I didn't expect there to be as much relevancy, if that's the right word to say, in this book as there actually is. There's there's quite a lot of actual comparisons that can be um, applied to cybersecurity way more than I thought would be possible. So let's let's go through it a little bit. Uh, one of the first chapters is about times of attack and they say how the ancient shinobi would choose their times of attack very specifically you know whether it was like guards that were rotating around so when the guard shift of the ancient castle um, that the shinobi was trying to infiltrate they would obviously rotate the guards so the one guards could go and sleep and the other guards can take over and they you and, and the author uses the comparison of how that can be applied to sort of SOC environments, you know, uh, security operation centers. And it says how uh, malicious threat actors can plan their attacks around the times of the business hours, and they break it down into different hours, such as like the hour of the the hour of the hair is between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. and is likely when most users will wake up, get their morning coffee and log on for the first time of the day. And then it explains about the hour of the horse, which is around lunchtime, saying that most users probably won't be on their computers. And then it's got the hour of the tiger, which is between like 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., where the sort of the systems will be performing automated tasks um and you'll have like a skeleton staff in the night shift you know i used to work night shift and i can confirm this overnight is when you run all your backups and do your windows updates and they always break so i, I yeah it, it's nice to be able to relate to the sort of information that's being put forward in this book and it, it does say when like the best times to attack are and when you need to be most vigilant because obviously uh you know if you're an attacker you're going to want to attack when there's there's less people who can monitor your attack um so yeah then you know one of the next chapters it goes on to talk about tools and as depicted in hollywood movies we see samurai ninjas and shinobi with all these fancy tools like grappling hooks on ropes and um, huge samurai swords, lock picking kits, bombs, smoke bombs, and all that sort of stuff. But the reality of it was was that the shinobi would take, would would choose their tools very carefully for the job they are they have at hand. Um, so if it was like an infiltration mission, they wouldn't carry around all this equipment. 
if they were trying to be stealthy, they would use techniques, um, TTPs they call it, so tactics, techniques and procedures that suit the job or the mission that they're on. And they would use a term called living off of the land where they would, you know, makeshift tools when they needed them or if they were in trouble, they would use like farmers implements as weapons of self-defense like scythes, you know, they would use those as weapons rather than lugging around weapons themselves. And it can be compared to modern cybersecurity in a way that hackers live off the land on systems that they compromise. You know, you're not always going to be able to install all the tools you need on systems once you get onto them. Once you're on a system, you 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 may have to rely on the built-in tools like PowerShell, which is you know notoriously uh, fun to use for a hacker, and and Bash and the built-in tools into the environment. And he goes on to describe how best you can sort of secure those tools on, on like Windows where you can implement policies so that it doesn't run specific tools. It's, it's really good. Um, yeah, and then it goes on to talk about sensors as well. So when the, uh, the Dynamo, I think it's called Dynamo, but the feudal lords of Japan um, wanted to defend their castle, what they would do is they would set up sensors outside their castle. So you would have like sniffer dogs or, or like dogs that could sniff out enemies or dogs that could hear out enemies and uh, they were compared to modern cyber like modern cyber security tools that uh, like intrusion detection systems and infiltration systems that um, you know listen out for activity and monitor it it's a bit of a reach for a comparison but it's, it's probably one of the furthest reaches in the whole book the rest of it's all fairly fairly good um, it talks about social engineering as well so we all know in cyber security that social engineering plays a huge part in what we do whether it's performing OSINT open source intelligence on your target so that you can tailor make a uh, bespoke phishing email that is within their interests and trick them to click on links that could uh, compromise their identity or compromise their security their sensitive information and it talks about how the shinobi would uh, use social engineering tactics to infiltrate uh, castles and stuff. So they could pretend to be vendors or elderly people. They would even change the, their gait, the way they walk, so that when they were sneaking around, you know, they could pretend to be someone else. So that um, the guards wouldn't like if the guards wouldn't hear the same footsteps twice you know if they were looking for a specific area and it says how they like the, the art of never looking lost and being able to adapt to all your situations and blend into the to the surroundings is a really good example uh but the next one's even better it's command and control so it talks about um how once a shinobi had infiltrated a castle you know, there were times where they wouldn't be able to leave to receive updates or orders from from whoever's leading them and instructing them. So instead, the way they would get messages into the castle, one example they used were was of using drums. So someone would sit outside the castle playing drums quite a distance off and the shinobi would listen out for it to hear their next orders. They would have a sort of pattern implemented beforehand and they would be able to listen to the drums so that they knew what their next instruction was. And it's a bit like the shinobi is the payload inside the net, the corporate network or inside the target network. And it's your command and control center that's sending the messages to the shinobi and, and how best to go about that. And they use examples of how you can do it really um, slyly, like by how it's been done through a Microsoft forum before. There was a Microsoft support forum uh, where comments were being posted it and those comments were being used to control payloads or, or bots inside a corporate network or even Twitter and GitHub. You know, if, if your malicious payload or your malware is sitting inside the network and frequently checking, like making, looking up a Twitter post, doing requests to Twitter posts to see you know what its next next instruction is it's, it's quite a smart way to do things i believe uh wanna cry was a bit similar as well the, the one that affected uh, took advantage of the eternal blue exploit one uh one sort of superhero on the internet reverse engineered the code and found that 
if if this domain had been registered that it would shut down and it would stop spreading and luckily for the internet you know uh this this one person found it and was able to shut down the botnet and he had no affiliation sorry the botnet the the malware and he had no affiliation obviously with developing it he just reverse engineered the code saw that it was looking for this malicious domain to be registered and that it would shut it down so that's a really good trait. And again, it goes on to talk about hiring Shinobi and the sort of tactic, the sort of tech, the sort of quality traits. It's the wrong word. The sort of character traits that uh, you look for when when employing a Shinobi. I mean, they could be the most skilled sort of warrior in the world. But if they don't have sort of key attributes like loyalty, capability, patience, intelligence, um, then then they might not be a right fit and it says how employing like people into your organization should be, go through this sort of vetting process it's it's all great hiring the best hackers off linkedin because they've got a huge skill set but if they're not a right fit for the culture for the environment that you're employing them into then the skills aren't going to matter if they're not going to gel with the way that you do business so it's much more important that you check certain quality like certain attributes of the character before employing them to make sure that they will fit in um and yeah one of the best things in the book is the, the end of every chapter uh there's they do this he, the author does this thing where he it's called castle theory i'm sure it's done in other books as well but he asks you to visualize being like uh, a lord of a castle back in the ancient times and gives you a scenario to say you know a shinobi's breaking in and he plans to set fire to this building uh, as a distraction so that the armies can attack a different entry point how would you protect against this type of environment and then against this type of threat and then he'll go on to discuss about how it can be applied to modern cybersecurity, and he 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 has links to all uh, like the NIST articles um, on on what the best policies and procedures are for different scenarios. But yeah, really to conclude, it's a really good book. Um, I didn't think it was going to be as good as it is. I didn't think it was going to be as formative as it is. It isn't like super technical. It doesn't go through like configurations and how to exploit this and how to exploit that. It's more like a philosophy of how cybersecurity can be compared to Shinobi and um, the ancient ways of the Shinobi scrolls. And he does take direct references from the scrolls. And uh, one of them, which I want to finish the video on, uh, because I just thought it was really good and I apologize if I mumble my way through it but I'll try my best it goes although there are millions of lessons for shinobi that are both subtle and ever-changing you can't teach them in their entirety by tradition or passing them on one of the most important things for you to do is always to know everything you can of every place and provenance that is possible to know if your mind is in total accordance with the way of things and its workings with perfect reason and logic, then you can pass through the gateless gate. The human mind is marvellous and flexible. It's amazing as time goes by, clearly or mysteriously, you will realise the essence of things or understanding will appear to you from nowhere. On the path of the shinobi, you should master everything and all you can. You should use your imagination and insight to realise and grasp the way of all matters. And that's that's perfect, the way it can be applied to modern cybersecurity, you know, or just, I feel like it's a life lesson in general, just try to learn as much about everything as you can. You know, I mean, whatever the reason is for life, whether it's just a mutation and it's just bonkers why wouldn't you want to learn as much as you can why wouldn't want you ex why wouldn't you want to experience everything possible so that's my thoughts on the book again it's, i'm going to try and do one once a week or once a month depending on the size of the book hope you enjoyed the video if you liked it give me a thumbs up if it swayed you to just to buy the book maybe you could subscribe um but that's it kind regards